Okay. So we need to discuss all about uh, loops. Let's go and you know start the loops. So yesterday we have discussed a little about uh, increment and decrement operators. And today we'll cover uh, Today we'll discuss on uh, while loop. So why do you need loops? So you you already know. Uh, I have a question for you guys. How can you print one to ten numbers without loops? If there is no loops, so how can you print it? So I'm expecting answers from you. How can you do that? You have to print one to ten. How can you print without loops? Any response from you guys? Anyone? How can you print one to ten without loops? No response. At least one you try. Hmm? Increment operator. Increment operator. Okay. So that's one answer, good. But uh, see, is there another way? No, right? You have to use a condition, then increment operator you have to use. That's one way, right? Otherwise, uh, it's not possible. But so otherwise, one more way is, you know, 10 times you have to print uh, print statements, write the print statement 10 times. So then no, that also will print another way. So these are the two ways without loops. But with loop, you can easily write only one print statement, it will loop it. Basically loops are used to repeat the specific block of code until a certain condition is met false. If condition is false, then it will exit that block of code. Then only your loop will exit. Otherwise, it won't exit. So now we have a different loops. Uh, while loop, do while loop, for loop, for each loop. These are the four types of loops we have. And so let's discuss on while loop. What is a while loop? And what is the structure of while loop? And uh, how to do this? while loop iterations, I'll just show you, so one by one. So while loop is, uh, no, another, you know, widely used loop uh, after, no, for loop. And this one is, so the block of code will be executed repeatedly until your condition is satisfied. So if the number of iterations are not fixed, so you just know only condition, and uh, so better to use while loop. So it is also known as an entry control loop. Basically, first it will check the condition, then it will enter into the body, while body. If condition is true, it will enter into the while body. If condition is false, it will exit the loop. Entire while loop exits. So that's the while loop. And uh, so this is the syntax of a while loop. First, you have to initialize a value. So you want to start from lower number or upper number, you have to tell. Okay, so that's a bigger value or lower value, you have to initialize. Then while condition, you have to write the condition. The condition place either you can use a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to the conditional operators you could use. Basically, you have to write a Boolean value in this condition. Then you write the logical statements. Then you have to use in the body itself after logical statements, either increment operator or a decrement operator you have to write. 
So here you are getting confused and right when to use less than symbol, when to use greater than symbol or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to or when to use plus plus operator, minus minus operator. So very simple. Let me give you. Uh, so when to use that. If your initialization is a very small value. Then in the condition you are going for the bigger value. That time you have to use a less than symbol and the increment operator. So what is the rule? Rule one is initialization value is a small. The outer boundary value is in the condition more. That means ascending order. So then you have to use a less than symbol in the condition place and increment operator in the body you have to use. So vice versa and another, no, if your initialization value is a bigger value, and in the lowest value you are going, your outer boundary value, then always use greater than or equal to symbol. Then you use a decrement operator here. So that's the, these two rules if you apply and you can easily answer, uh, you won't make mistakes while writing the value. So here is the you know, uh, diagram. So code outside the loop, first checks the condition, if the condition is true, code inside the while block, it will execute. Then cursor will pass it to again condition. Once So code inside the while loop is done, then again, it will go to condition place. If condition is false, it will exit the entire while loop. So this, just remember this diagram, how it is, you know, flowing, the you no know, cursor is how it is moving. Only when it is true, it will go to while loop body. So then the incremented value you will get after body execution only. Then new value every time you will get. So new, with new value, you have to check the condition every time. So until this condition is false, the same loop will keep rotating here. This is the repeating a same block of code until your condition is True. So this is the one of the you no know, example. Let me take here and the so in our control structures, I'll write a small program. I'll explain step by step how it will be executed. Take the main method. So here. So I want to print 1 to 10, okay? I want to print 1 to 10. Print 1 to 10. So suppose if you use, without you no know, loops, if you use, see, you have to write uh, 10 times print statement, right? You have to write uh, 1, so something like that, you have to write it 10 times. That's a uh, no lengthy, for example, 10 times, okay. But if you want to write uh, 100 numbers, if you want to print, then that's a more duplicate and lengthy code, right? So that's why you should not use this process. 10 is okay. So it's a bit uh, no reasonable. Now see here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, and so and so on. So, for example, I want to print a ten. So, I have to write one more print statement. Total ten. So this will execute, right? One to ten, it will print for you. That's fine. But is there a simple way? Only one print statement you need to write. Yes, we can do that. So, this is the one way. I'm just commenting about that. There is another way you can do that. So you can initialize uh, int i equal to one, and then you can do if condition, if, so i less than or equal to 10, and you can write a condition and increment the i value every time. So print the i value, and then you increment the i value. So i plus plus, right? So this you can do, and this is another way to print it. 
Hmm? Okay, this this also doesn't help you. Uh, you have to do every time. This is also not helping. See that, and we have to use a loop only. So because the first time only it is you no. Know, I value changing, right? I value is not changing. It's, it's just one time only it is executing because here I value, so you have to change here I value. So either you have to increment here, I plus plus, and uh, yeah, this, this doesn't work out. So with the condition also not possible. So only this is the way you can do, but with the while loop, you can do that. So what is the first initialization? You do that int i equal to one. Then condition, you write a condition because I one to 10 means it's ascending order. Ascending order means always you have to use a less than or equal to i less than or equal to 10. And then, so you just print the i value. Okay, just print the i value. So then I have to increment the value by one. So I plus plus. So this is the one it will print 10 times, but you need to execute manually this entire thing one by one. So let me, it is printing, but how it is executing, we don't know, right? Let's let's execute this. See first I equal to one. So replace the I value one, one less than or equal to first condition, check the condition. So it is true. So true means what I told you, it will come inside the body. So body inside, it will come, the output will print for you one. Okay. So this statement is executed. Now, what is the next statement? I plus plus. So I plus plus means I have a current I value one. Now. Plus plus means plus one. Now. So I will becomes two. Now, current I value is two, not one. So again, check the condition. The condition is two less than or equal to 10. That is true. Comes inside. So I value two will print. So basically, I am just writing here uh, in the same line. But if you want the same line, you can do this spacing slash t. So print method, it will print in the same line, right? With a space. This slash t is a tabbing. Okay. So our tab purpose will use slash t and one space will come. Now, again, now check the i value. So I equal to current I value two plus plus means plus one. So I will become three. And again, what will happen? This body is over. Body over after where it will go condition place. So now I value three less than or equal to 10. Every time you check the condition, every time you check the condition, if it is true, so it will come to the body and executes line by line code. So this is now I value three. Let's print that three and then check the i value again, get the new updated value. So i equal to current i value three, plus plus means plus one, it will become four. So after getting this body is over, it will go to condition. So now check the condition, i value four, four less than or equal to 10, true, comes inside. Again, i value four, so four I'm printing, sorry. Four I will print here and then space. And then after that, check the I plus plus. I plus plus means I equal to four plus one, it's a five. So now I will increment it. So it will check five less than or equal to 10, it is true. And so it will now, it is true. So then it will come here. I value currently five, so five will print. And space will print because slash t is a space. Tab, so tab will print. Then what is the next step after print statement? I plus plus. So I plus plus, execute the I plus plus. So I equal to, I plus plus is nothing but I equal to I plus one. I equal to I plus one. So I value currently five plus one, it's a six. So it will go to the condition now. So I value six less than or equal to 10. It is true. Comes inside. 
So I value six will print. Space will print. Next, this line will execute. So what is that line? I equal to six plus one, that says seven. So now it will go to condition place. Now I will replace I value with a new updated I value, that is seven. So seven less than or equal to 10, true. So comes inside, I value seven will print, space will print. And then here, so I plus plus will execute. I equal to the I plus one is seven plus one, it is eight. So now it will go up condition I value eight. So eight will print. So eight will check the condition eight less than or equal to 10 true. So like this, you do all iterations so that you will get a confidence. So step by step, you do that. True comes here. So if the condition is true, check always first condition. If condition is true, and then it will come into the while body. So that is I value, so eight, so eight will print, space will print. Then comes here, so I equal to current eight plus one, that is nine. So now updated I value is nine. So nine less than or equal to 10, true. Comes inside, nine will print. Nine will print and space will print. Now here, the I plus plus will execute. I equal to nine plus one, it is 10. So then it will go condition. 10 less than or equal to 10, true. Comes inside, 10 will print. Again, it will increment the I value. I equal to 10 plus 1, 11. So now what is the condition? So 11 less than or equal to 10. True or false? False. 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 False means it won't come inside the while body. No. Exit the. So it will exit the entire while. So this is the how you need to execute. So can you do the exercise um, 10 to 1 you have to print. So 10 to 1 you have to print. Can you do that? Okay, Rami. So please practice that quickly. Maybe if you want to do quickly, you can do that. And you know, share it here. Otherwise, you can do later. So that is the so this. So while loop how it works. We'll write more programs here also later. So you can try that without seeing our uh, blog. So next we have infinite loop. So infinite loop means the condition is never going to be false. The condition is not going to be false. That time you will get an infinite. So now here you see int i equal to one while i greater than zero. i is always greater than zero because i is you are incrementing here. You are incrementing the i value. So you're incrementing the I value here. So always I value going to be greater than zero only. So there is no chance of becoming a false. That's why it will become so infinite loop. So that's a one infinite loop example. And here also, there is no chance of becoming false here. While true, it will become always true only, true only. That's why it will print I value. Can you tell me this? How many times Java will print here? <laughs> How many times Java will print here? Just execute line by line code so that you will get answer easily. One time only. Only one time. One time. Exactly. See that here. I value one, 
1 less than or equal to 1 true comes inside Java will print. Then I++. plus plus. So Java pre after printing Java, it will go to I++. plus plus. I++ plus plus means I value 1, 1 plus 1, 2. Now 2 less than or equal to 1. True or false? False. False. So it doesn't come inside. It will exit here. So same here. Can you tell me what are the values will print here? I values. I equal to 2 while I less than or equal to 20 and I value print it and then so comma I'm putting then I multiply by I. So can you tell me what are the values it will print? What are the values it will print? Are you counting? Even numbers. Five and seventeen. I think you are not executing properly. Here, this is not I plus plus. So. This is not I plus plus. So. This is I multiply by I. Result is four and sixteen. Four and sixteen. 16, I think you're missing one, first one. Two also will print, right? Yes, In print statement, it will print two, and then it will multiply the same. Ah, so first it will print two, right? So first you will check, first you have to check two with the two, right? First time. Okay. Two less than or equal to 20. True, right? So it will become yes. true. Now two will print right first time. Then it will update, right? Then it will update. First time you have to count first time also. Directly cannot jump and update, right? So go step by step. What is the first I value two? So two less than 20 true comes inside. Two will print. And two multiply by two, four. So now I value become four. So 4 less than or equal to 20 true comes inside, 4 will print. So again, now here 4 multiplied by 4, 16. 16 less than or equal to 20 true, 16 will print. 16 times 16, 256. 256 greater than, less than or equal to 20, false. So it won't come inside. So that's how you need to calculate them, okay? So this program, I'll tell later, this program. So that is the one. Uh, so let's go and do the do while loop. Are you clear on the while loop? Yes, Ramesh. Okay. So let's go and do the do while loop. Okay. So what is do while loop? So we have seen while loop. While loop is first you are checking the condition, then you are entering into the while body. But the do while loop, first your code will execute, then you will check the condition. That's the difference between a while loop and do while loop. So while loop is called entry control loop. First you are in, no, checking the condition and then you are entering loop. Here you are exiting 
when in the condition is false. So that's a exit control loop also we call this do while loop. Do while loop first body will execute at least once before becoming false. Before your condition becoming false. So body will execute first. Then it, it will become condition check. If the condition is true, again it will go to do block. If condition is true, the cursor will pass to do block until the condition met false. Otherwise, it keep going. That's a loop. Loop means that's a one. It's keep going if the condition becomes true. So that's a do while loop. So while loop, first you will check the condition, then you will enter into the while body. In the do while loop, first you will enter into the body. It will execute all your statements, all your logic. Then your condition will be checked. The condition is checked at the end. So that is the this do while loop uh, structure. So the do while loop structure is initialization, do statements and increment or decrement, then while condition. You have to write a while condition. So this is the so do while block. Uh, no, how it will execute. So here also you can write infinite loop systems, uh, same way how we have written. I'll tell you these programs. So uh, how to write. Uh, so you need to add the numbers until you say no. So you are adding multiple numbers. You have to sum all of them. If you keep adding the numbers, you want to add a number? Yes. So again, one more number you will ask. The previous number and this number you have to sum up and give the sum. How many numbers you add? All the numbers it has to sum and give it to you output. So that's why add numbers you can do with while loop. And also one more program we have very realistic example that is uh, uh, you need to guess the random number until that uh, random number matches. Your guess number and random number both are same. Until that, you have to keep playing. That's this kind of no uh, game, right? So that's the another program. So we can try this uh, this also. Uh, but because I'm going to use for both these programs a scanner class. Yesterday I explained a scanner class. What is scanner class and how we can use all the methods. And I have explained that. So today in this uh, no while loop programs we can use this uh, do while loop program so we can use a scanner class to give the input from the keyboard right how to do that i have explained so please watch uh, yesterday's video one more time if you have but i'll explain one more time this uh, scanner class and uh, so let's let's start you now writing the programs and uh, so join back so we can uh, do that okay so just join back i'll uh, We'll start writing the coding. Okay. All while programs will write. Okay. So just join back 